ordinary everyday top coat one thousandth of an inch thick. Think what it has to put up with in one ordinary working day. The kicks, the bangs, the scratches, the strains and stretches of continual use, the heat, the moisture. Yet for weeks, months, years, that coat of paint is expected to present to the world a happy, smiling face. If it doesn't, if it cracks under the strain, whose reputation suffers? The firm whose name is on the article. Today's do-it-yourself public is critical. Paint is easy to criticize. To help manufacturers to provide finishes which are good-looking and long-lasting, ICI Paints Division has several laboratories given over entirely to testing paint films. These comprehensive tests, extending to primers and undercoats as well as top coats, cover all the properties a good paint film must have. Hardness, adhesion and so on. But, to start at the beginning, before a film can be tested, it must be made. And because testing involves comparison, each film must be made in a standard way. So, first we need a standard base, normally a metal panel. Next, we need an even coating. Onto the panel is poured a measured amount of the paint we want to test. is spun. Spinning gives a more uniform coating than brushing or spraying. It has another advantage. Spinning means an identical film can be reproduced to order at any time. Our paint film is now made and then dried. But before we test it, we must have a record of its thickness. The panel is placed between two air jets which act as pneumatic calipers. The gauge, a Solex thickness gauge, is zeroed. The part of the panel on which it was zeroed is marked. The paint is scraped away from the marked portion. manufacturers of articles 
vehicles which have to withstand outdoor exposure. After weathering comes appearance. To sell something, you must give it initial sales appeal. Paint is the first thing to catch the eye. This instrument measures the gloss of a paint film and awards it marks out of a hundred. A note is made of the percentage gloss recorded by each panel. Black plate glass is taken as the standard and scores a hundred. Another factor contributing to a paint's appearance is opacity. This is tested on a modest chart. A given weight of paint applied to a given area will tell us what opacity, or hiding power, a paint film has. Once the sale is made, it's the way the finish wears that matters. Paint gets a lot of rough treatment, so we must be sure our film is tough and hard. Hardness is measured on the automatic sword rocker. Over the panel we want to test is placed a pendulum and closed rigidly within a steel frame. The pendulum is set rocking. Clearly, the harder the paint film, the more easily and longer the pendulum will rock. As the rocking slows down, a timing and counting device with an electronic eye cuts out. The recorded number of rocks gives an accurate indication of the hardness of the film. Another device for testing hardness is the Wallace Indentation Hardness Tester. A small hemisphere of metal is forced into the paint film under varying loads. Oscillation in the headphones gives the operator information from which he can calculate not only the rate of penetration, but also the rate of subsequent recovery. Testing hardness isn't enough. The wear a paint film gets can be of various kinds. You can put something down in one of two ways. You can place it, or you can slide it. Sliding means scratching. test a film's scratch resistance, there is the automatic scratch hardness test. A tiny ball end needle is drawn at a steady rate across the panel surface. The needle is loaded with more and more weight until it scratches through to the metal. The weight which causes the breakthrough is the measure of the film's scratch resistance. In another test, the panel is weighed and placed on a tabor abrasor. Two carborundum wheels are lowered onto the film and the panel is revolved. The dust formed is removed instantaneously by suction. The texture of the wheels the weight on the arms and the number of revolutions can be varied to suit the type of test required. After the test, the panel is re-weighed. This time, the film's scratch resistance is measured by its loss of weight. Scratching, which is erosion, is a very different matter from shock, impact. Our film must also have a good resistance to incidental blows. On this impact tester, the panel is struck a blow with a ball 
light necessary to break down the coating tells us the film's impact resistance. But here we come to another property. The film's strength depends not only on its hardness, but on its adhesion. The two properties are very closely allied. Hardness without adhesion tends to brittleness. In the ICI test for adhesion, small discs are stamped out of the painted panels and fired from a gun worked by compressed air. The disc is loaded, the silencer raised into position, the gun cocked, and the air cylinder adjusted to the required pressure. The disc is fired vertically at a hole, which stops the disc dead, but allows the paint film to fly on. By varying the pressure, we find out what force is needed to jerk the paint film from the disc. From this, we can calculate a film's adhesive qualities. An extreme instance of the importance of adhesion is in aircraft. At high speeds, there is great stress on a paint film, especially along the wing leading edges. But the film must do more than adhere. It must be able to take in its stride any expansion, contraction and movement of the basic metal. It must be flexible. These sun blinds are made of thin metal strips coated with paint. Sun blinds are subject to torsion. Unless our paint film is flexible, it will quickly break down. Tins are another example. They are made from flat sheet, which is painted before the tins are formed. Elasticity is especially important on surfaces liable to expand, contract and warp, like, say, garage doors. Remember how you used to bend a bar of toffee? Well, that's the principle of the automatic bend test mandrel. panels are bent over a number of rods of different diameters to see over which diameter of rod the film will fail. The more flexible films will only fail over very small diameter rods. In some applications, the rate of bending is important, so the mandrel can bend the panels in one second or six as required. Another device, the extensionometer, we can test the stretch property of the film itself without the panel. The film is clamped to the extensionometer, care being taken not to pre-stretch it. A weight is placed below. When the weight is released, the film stretches quickly at first, then it slows up. The rate at which it extends is recorded automatically on the graph. In tests like these, temperatures can have an important bearing on performance, so they are carried out in a constant temperature room. Besides risks from wear and tear, there are risks from chemical reaction and contamination. There are several things, some you'd never think of, which have been known to stain paint films or cause them to fail. Different paints can have different allergies. And ICI does a lot of research trying to protect manufacturers against complaints of this kind. Detergents, too, have been known to shorten paint life. In the laboratories, panels are immersed in strong detergent at high temperatures and tested to destruction. The films we have tested so far were made under ideal conditions. To obtain an even coating, they were spun. But they won't be spun when applied in a manufacturer's paint shop. A paint that spins well may not brush well, and a manufacturer's process may involve brushing. If the paint is for dipping, it must have the right viscosity 
and flow well. If it's to be sprayed, it must have adequate covering power as the manufacturer of the article will apply it. In short, the paint film is tested for ease and suitability of application. Another factor which can affect a paint's afterlife is drying. Paint must dry hard and it must adhere. To take air drying first, we could test the paint's drying properties by just leaving it to dry. But a better way is the sand trail and needle trace. Coated panels are rotated very slowly, taking 6, 12 or 24 hours to go full circle as required. As each panel rotates, a hopper drops a trail of sand and a ball-headed needle underneath it draws a fine trace through the film. If we leave it overnight, in the morning we have a complete and permanent record of drying progress. The sand trail and needle trace is a valuable device for assessing the drying behavior of paints for outdoor use. Paints used in the building trade dry easily at summer temperatures, but winter conditions give more trouble. To test their drying properties under conditions of cold and humidity, panels are placed in a refrigerator with a cold circulating atmosphere. Many industrial finishes are heat dried. Paints division keeps several types of ovens. Their temperatures and transit times can be adjusted to simulate conditions in particular factories. In this radiant heat oven, the heat comes from gas. In another, from powerful electric heating lamps. Consider for a moment what these tests on many thousands of different paint films every year mean to the industrial manufacturer. They mean that ITI can make available to him a wealth of practical knowledge on paint behavior under all sorts of conditions. The tests do his experimenting for him and save him valuable time. guide him quickly to the right paint for his process. They guide him quickly to the right paint to help his product withstand the occupational hazards it will have to meet in the big bad world outside. Too, for the public which is going to buy and use his product. The tests are a safeguard against the paint's premature breakdown. The tests you have seen, and many more you haven't, are all backed by the most modern scientific research apparatus. This hardy spectrophotometer makes a permanent record of a paint's color in numerical terms. The cathode ray polarograph identifies and records minute amounts of trace metals. 